Sorry, in London. Hello, it's January 27th, 2010. Where has this month gone? My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour. Well, I could be addicted to work, relationships, collecting, materialism, you name it. Filling that emptiness inside, wondering about the fear. And uh, why did I start drinking alcohol? Well, everybody around me seemed to be doing it. I was a kid and I took that first drink and immediately a warm feeling, not feeling sick, just a warm feeling and happy and not fearful, not wanting or needing to be found out about anything. So, 35 years later, well, some years back now, I had to stop because it was killing me and it had killed me in many respects over the years. It had been the alleviator of fear and also the administrator of me. It took me over and uh, you know it's nice to be convivial, joyful, happy, have a drink in hand, uh, be convivial, um, bonhomie and then suddenly along the way a drink is needed to take the edge off the other addictions of work and relationships and collecting and materialism and everything that bombards us every day of our lives until I got a moment of clarity and these days it's better to be sober. So why do these videos? Well simply because I, I feel it's a good idea to share experience, strength and hope to those who maybe cannot get to meetings and that was the original idea. It was suggested to me when I used to, used to go twice a week to a treatment facility in Soho in London. And Soho was my stomping ground for all the clubs and nightlife that I really enjoyed in my convivial drinking days. So, irony, returning to the scene of the crime. But it was also a good idea, I felt, to just keep on going because it's helpful to me as well because it means I get out and express my feelings on a daily basis. So for me today, I feel okay, even though I've got a cold, and my blood sugars are four times higher than they ought to be. So uh, rather a large injection of in insulin this morning. The gift of recovery, uh, getting type 1 diabetes from a, an infection to virus, and then onset of type 1 in my 50s. So there you go, the, uh, the pleasures of recovery. And... Uh, Today, I was just going to, I'm going to read a bit out of this book, The Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, all about step one, which is the first step of recovery for me, which was to change my attitude and behaviour towards alcohol. And step one is powerless over alcohol and life is unmanageable. But I'm going to start with the AA preamble, which I share always in these videos, this one. And I read it out simply because if I try and do it from memory, it's from memory, memory and it's a recitation rather than a meditation so here's the meditation bit about the purpose of AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership in other words it's free if you haven't got any money we are self-supporting through our own contributions, which includes tea and coffee, hopefully, and a few biscuits. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. does not wish to engage in any controversy, which means we only go there for one reason, and this is it. It neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So when it says the primary purpose is to share a message of experience, strength and hope, to others who would like to achieve sobriety or need to to uh, get their lives back on track that's what we do it for and that's what we're there for and it's to be a part of a fellowship to be included to understand how to feel life again rather than suppress our feelings about the life we have which could be quite miserable drinking and in the 12 steps of this book Step one and the first couple of paragraphs sums up really very nicely what January has always been about in my videos, which is to share where we start. And it says here, step one, we, meet, we, would, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Who cares to admit complete defeat? Practically, practically no one, of course. 
Every natural instinct cries out against the idea of personal powerlessness. It is truly awful to admit that, glass in hand, we have warped our minds into such an obsession of for destructive drinking that only an act of, act of providence can remove it from us. And for me that act of providence was actually finding a fellowship. I didn't find it, it sort of found me. No other kind of bankruptcy is like this one. Alcohol now became, or becomes, our, the rapacious creditor, leads us of all self-sufficiency and all will to resist its demands. Once this stark fact is accepted, our bankruptcy, as going human concerns, is complete. But upon entering AA, we soon find, soon take quite another view of this absolute humiliation. We perceive that only through utter defeat are we able to take our first steps towards liberation and strength. Our admissions of personal powerlessness finally turn, into a, turn out to be firm bedrock upon which happy and purposeful lives may be built. And the gift in there is actually realising that if we are powerless over people, places, things and alcohol, we're not trying to control it anymore and uh, we can feel more at ease with ourselves that we are a part of life again. You know, we're not centre center stage and nor should we even think we ought to be even though we are st centre stage in our own existence. We can't take that away. It's part of our uniqueness and authenticity. It doesn't make us special and different to other people. So the programme is a levelling exercise in what we can do and what we can't do and how to build our relationships with other people again. And in this book, Daily Reflections, Freedom From and Freedom To, for January 30th, oh, I'm on the wrong page. Let's go back one page. Just checking the time there as well. Yeah, January 20... I was going too many pages forward. How did that happen? Freedom from guilt. There we go. Yes. Guilt and shame. Where other people were concerned, we had to drop the word blame from our speech and thought. When I become willing to accept my powerlessness, I begin to realise that blaming myself for all the trouble in my life can be an ego trip back into hopelessness. Asking for help and listening deeply to the messages inherent in the steps and traditions of the programme make it possible to change those attitudes which delay my recovery. Before joining AA, I had such a desire for approval from people in powerful positions that I was willing to sacrifice myself and others to gain a foothold in the world. In other words, I put myself at their disposal. And you know, it's amazing how this, this book describes my life and what I did in many instances. I invariably came to grief. In the programme I find true friends who love, understand and care to help me learn the truth about myself. With the help of the 12 steps I am able to build a better life, free of guilt and the need, to, need for self-justification. And you know, I had self-justification going along in my life all the time. I was fearful that I wasn't good enough. The fear, fear crippled me experiencing the other feelings I had of love. Uh, to love people, be loved back and be included and have something useful to do which was besides work you know I let work define me all my life and career it took me to amazing places without doubt and m amazing experiences which I am able to cherish these days but at the same time it distorted my outlook completely from balance in life and finding this spiritual path of truth so, for me, that step one, powerless over alcohol and life unmanageable, was so integral that I didn't realise that it was an acceptance of me on a daily basis. I need to accept on a daily basis who I am, no bigger, no smaller, not special and different, but certainly unique and authentic in living my life. And what helps me most when things are going awry, or even good, just to bring me back into check, is that serenity prayer which I share at the end of all these videos whether it is to God or to good conscience it's as you decide which is so important so to God or good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is simply just for today